Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Michael Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your Intech Soul Dawn Rover Edition travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you're going to have that little awning. On your off campsite, main thing I want you to think about is where your power and water connection is going to be. They're both can be right above your tire area. Power here, water there. Park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive, unhook our hitch. First thing we're gonna do is level our unit. And it does come with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply extend to raise or retract to lower. Now should you lose power under this rubber stopper right here, is a manual override that you can use your stabilizing jack hand crank on. Bring that up and down without power. Speaking of power, check your battery posts every now and then. They're inside. We'll go inside and take a look at them here shortly. Once we got our unit level, we're going to stabilize it now for time saving saving purposes i ran this down most of the way as i run it down the rest of the way i'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt debris hot black top in the summer better distribute the weight uh grab you a four pack of those remember our unit's level so all we're trying to do at this point is stabilize it so you only want to run these down until you've got some resistance on your hand crank you can use an impact driver or a drill gun. Just slow down when you get to the bottom because remember, like I said, we don't want to change the levelness. We just want to get it stable. Once the unit's level and stable, all four corners down, we can hook up our power and water. Big, long 30 amp cord here. Plugs in the side with the pistol grip. It'll wiggle in at about 11, turn, to, turn it to the right. Now at the end of that 30 amp service, should you need, there's a 30 to 15 amp reducer that'll get you uh, plugged into a 110 if you need. Power hooked up, let's hook up our water. At campsites, we're gonna hook up to city water connection. That's gonna be the one here on the right. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. I always use this because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. One more step. All we're gonna do at this point, make sure we have our drain in our hot water heater. This door will come right up off here. Get that drain plug back in there, throw some uh, plumber's tape around there. Not putty, putty will gum up on you. Plumber's tape, it's an inch and an eighth socket. Get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there all the way, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, if that hose been on for a little bit, get inside and open up your water taps. Get all of your lines opened up if you have water in them. Get all the air out of the lines. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Shut them off. Then you can turn this hot water heater on from indoors. Now, if for some reason your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come on here and check these reset buttons. If they're bubbled up, just simply press them back in. All right, let's see. We're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping. Boondocking. 
In that case, we're gonna simply fill up our fresh water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. There's also a spot to see your fresh water tank. Keep an eye on that while you're filling it. Don't leave this unattended while you're doing so. Once it's full, remove that hose. Put your cap back on here. And then when you want to utilize that fresh water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when you're using city water that's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up with power and water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. Continuing over here on our off camp side. As I said, your battery is indoors. That is a vent for your battery. It's inside underneath your seat. I'll show you that when we go in. There's our hot water heater again. Sewage hose container. Up here's our water connection again. This is a flue for your furnace. Two things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of that. It does get hot. These are access for the technician to get into the back of your fridge. There's you can plug in a solar panel that'll trickle charge your batteries. Below that, your cable for the cap sites. Again, your power. Back here is where you'll dump your tank. Black and gray tanks all run in together. Got a spray port hose out here. Little tip for that. Pull this hose out, hook that up here with the quick connect and you can spray things off. There is a uh, backup camera offered from a uh, different manufacturer on here. Mobile Vision, it looks like it says. I want to check on that if you do want a backup camera for the unit. We're going to run your awning out here shortly. you got a porch light as well. This is where your awning legs can go into. A couple of 110s out here. In your storage, which will stay up with a magnet. You got this big cover for the front that you can actually snap on to cover your glass for travel. And then you've got your hand crank for your awning and some stakes to put them in the ground. Coming up front again, our stabilizing jack, or excuse me, power tongue jack. And inside here is our propane tanks. That cover is held just by these cotter pins. Lefty Lucy to open, point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Um, you can put it in the middle for an automatic switch over. I recommend going one tank at a time. Even if you have to get up in the middle of the night to switch over tanks, you know that you're down to one tank. And that about covers everything out here. So take a look on the inside. All right, coming up beside the unit. First thing I always point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry door in case of emergency. I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you. I've lifted all these cushions over here. We've got this access panel right here. And we've got a lot of things up underneath there. It won't lift all the way. If you're just peeking, it'll lift quarter of the way up. I'm going to lift it and pull it right up out of my way. So I can show you quite a few things underneath here. Starting with your battery. Your battery sits down here. This is your hot water heater. When you winterize, you will get in here. You'll bypass this hot water heater. I'll show you that. Bypass this hot water heater by turning it to the right where it's running past the hot water heater. And then you will use this to siphon in your antifreeze. You turn that straight. That will, um, then you'll turn on your water pump and that will siphon that in to winterize your lines. This is also your water pump, your main drain lines when you're leaving the campsite. These are your, turn both those in line. Those will be your uh, low point drains. And then this is your fresh tank fresh water tank here fresh water tank drain when you want to set that straight that'll drain that there's everything up underneath here let me get put this all back together all right with all that back together i will continue here at the doorway you've got a max air vent turn that on 
it'll open up and turn on you can change the speeds hit off it will shut itself off and close itself left here is going to be the thermostat Let's turn the air on here brick dump on the ends middle as well shut the AC off Went to off and shut off usually rather quickly shut off now I'm going to turn on your heat the furnace hear that kick on now you'll notice when I shut your furnace off it's going to take a couple more minutes than it did the AC for the fan to cycle through before it shuts off and here you go there 110 here we got an insignia TV crank that up when you arrive at the campsites, go in, run a digital channel scan, pick up all of your local channels. This is Fire TV Editions. Got another remote for our sound system. All right, our stereo here. Over here is the sound system. Turn that on. Dual zone. Potential was there. Like um, sound indoors, or up front, or back here, or both. <laughs> AM, FM, Bluetooth, uh, that's a cool, that's a CD, cool USB, nice sound system. Our kitchen area, we've got a 110 with GFCI reset. Turn these to light, get your gas, see those go on, sink here with a dryer, you heard that furnace just shut off so it shows you about how much time that takes, all of our lighting here, and here's where we see our brand new battery, there's where you check your fresh tank and your black tank, here's where you turn on your water pump if using water from the fresh water tank. Here's where you turn on a tank heater. That's a little 12 volt pad that's on your tanks in case you think you're in inclement weather and it may freeze. Here's where you turn on your water heater hooked to gas, your water heater hooked to electric. It does make a difference which you choose. Keep an eye on your water lines underneath here. Your wet bath. Do you have a hand crank open? Power exhaust in here as well. Self-explanatory microwave. That works. Your Norco fridge. Turn that on over here. Running off. Oops. Shut it off. So our different modes here. Here's auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you're unplugged, you're on gas. Next one is just electricity. Next one's 12 volt, which is your battery. Next one's just gas. Autos are generally what you're gonna want that on, and over here you change your temperature. Down below your fridge, access panel to your breaker box and fuses. A ton of 15s in there and a 40. I recommend having those with you when you go camping. And that last thing down here is your 12 volt carbon dioxide propane detector. Reason I mentioned that's 12 volts, always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, and you're going to be gone for the entire day, use your battery disconnect to keep this running your battery down while you're gone. Speaking of that battery disconnect, down below your microwave is that battery disconnect. As I said, that'll shut off all the battery power to the unit. Save on your battery if you're out dry camping and you're going to be gone for the day. 110. 12 volt and a couple of USB ports. Our smoke alarm is up here in the front. Make 
shed. Set this table up for a bed. So up in the storage up here will be this. This is a wooden bottom that will slide in here. You're gonna lift up these cushions, put these underneath, not easily done one-handed. So let me do this for you to show you how this sets up. That is your bedding. Your table will remove by this curved piece. When you're ready to put it back in, slide it into the slot, turn it all the way to the right. It locks itself in, and then you set your table. Top. Now you've got a bed and a nightstand. And one last thing before closing the unit up. This black little string underneath your TV, pull down on that. That's going to release your TV. So you can swivel this to watch easier over there. I wanted to point out when you arrive at the campsites, make sure this red light is on. That is your digital channel enhancer and your antenna. That will allow you to pick up more channels when you run your digital channel scan. Make sure you fold this in correctly when locking it in. It's all set for travel. All right, let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. Let me shut off all of our main lights. Look around the unit. Make sure everything is secure. Doors and drawers. Everything is closed for travel. Exit the unit. Before you leave the dump station, and I say that in case you want to check your tanks while you're dumping, Lock and deadbolt this door for travel. If we are out boondocking, we're going to bring up our stabilizing jacks. Go inside, lift up, and dump our fresh water drain. That's going to be that clear one I showed you. That'll dump underneath there. And head on home. If we're at a campsite, we're going to unhook our water, our cable, our power. Hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump's going to be right behind your tire on your off-camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. You got a 10-foot hose, comes your convenience pack. Arrive, unhook your dust cap, hook this up out in there, and pull your black handle. Once that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, make sure it is empty. If it is empty, come back outside here, close that up, remove this, rinse that out good somewhere, and then come up here and store it in your stinky, slinky storage container. Go inside, underneath that sink, and open up them low point drains, get all your water up out of there. When that's done, if you're done camping for the season, come over to your hot water heater. Lift up on this pressure release valve. That's going to dump some hot water out of there, so be careful. Push that back down, otherwise your door won't close. And then remove this drain plug. Again, be careful. Hot water. And you're all set. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this soul for many years to come. Happy camping. Alright, let's show uh, your Julia awning. Here, grab your hand crank. See it's slotted. Get that up in there. Start turning that to the right. The best I can one handed here. Can extend this handle too. Now, well, once you got it cranked out, you're gonna come to the ends here. You gotta lift up on this metal piece. It's gonna release this. I'll show you what that does. I lift up on this one. You'll see it release down here. Come down. 
you can bring these down and put them on the ground or bring them up here okay, extend a little bit further connecting up here you want to lift that up set your bottom down in there and then press that down same thing here lift this up put the bottom in put on top and there's your awning as i said you can take the legs extend them and stake them down reversing the process it's going to release this bring it back up here push that leg back in set that in here and then bring that over and that will lock that in same thing over here to release it push it in set it up press it forward you're locked in we'll hand crank that back 